Hello and welcome back to another episode of Bums Breakdown. Today we're going to be doing the Oakland Roots preview for the upcoming game this Saturday. Uh, but to begin with, we'll go over the last game, the recap versus the Miami FC. A 3-2 win away from home, as always, joined by Dylan. Dylan, uh, I know we had a great watch party at Elsmith's this weekend, um, but what were your thoughts on the actual uh, on the actual game itself? Uh, it was a tough one. It definitely didn't pan out how I predicted last week. Um, it was more high scoring. Uh, but I think we started off kind of struggling in the same ways we've seen the last few weeks um, and adjusted well. Uh, you know, we can, we'll get into a little bit, maybe more what Miami did or didn't do, but it was good to see us adjust in game in a successful manner. Um, and I think too, that just like, Oh, we needed that. You know, that was the performance we needed against what was it? El Paso a couple or whoever it was. Um, and you know, it was nice to get that emotional win. I mean, you've got El Paso and you've also got Rai Grand, two games where... That's who it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Both, both of those games, I think, we probably we should have won and could have won. Uh, maybe not could have. Um, but looking at it, I mean, obviously, we kind of speak about managers uh, throughout these, these shows too, as far as the changes they make in the game, how they kind of affect the game. And I think sometimes this season, we've kind of been wanting maybe a bit more change, a bit more difference from the players come off the bench. And not to say that the, the choices or subs that Nate is making are um, are bad choices or anything. Um, some of the players don't always, uh, I guess, perform to the way that he wants them to off the bench. Um, but do you think the kind of subs and choices that Nate, Nate made won us the game this weekend? Yeah, I think I think they did. Um, there were a couple small tweaks he made in the first half about uh, kind of the where the wing backs were playing in relation to the the build up in the back line that I think helped. And then um, also the substitutions at halftime. I always appreciate when a manager makes halftime substitutions um, because it says they recognize that something's not working or something could be better and they're being proactive and trying to change it. Um, shout out to our good friend, John Morrissey at USL Tactics did a great video on uh, some of the things Nate Miller did as well. I recommend you all check out. And that's the thing. I think at times of season two, we've kind of had our wing backs playing very high. And I think at times they do need to be a high to kind of get involved with the attack. Um, but you saw the change on this week and allowed them to kind of get into the game more and just get involved more with that initial build-up. Because I know for a lot, of, a lot of times is that we kind of have the have the back three. One of them will push up and um, Koki will then kind of step into that back three and be another centre-back. And I think, I mean, kind of looking at some of the, ga the gameplay back, um, there was times too where we were getting caught out with a kind of Elijah bombing on forward too. So... Um, things still need to be worked on, tweaked at the back. And I think definitely, I mean, you look at the goals we conceded. I mean, um, Grant Stoneman with honestly one of the best goals <laughs> I've seen this season. Um, maybe not uh, intentional, but still a decent finish. Um, and then the second goal too with, I mean, you can maybe say it's a foul against Nick Moon on the edge of um, their box that led to the goal. But but again, you've got Carl Adams on the halfway line. Um, again, I, I think, being caught out I think Carl Adams stepped too high up Murphy was kind of able to get in behind him in kind of in their own half as well um I know Carl Adams kind of got back in got got in front of the ball um but then kind of standing off and allowing him to have that shot um I guess the main thing was, was really wasn't good enough um but for me kind of kind of stand out things here obviously Conway back on the score sheet um Collier was first goal for San Diego as well um anyone else stand out for you from that game as well uh, I, th yeah, Nick Moon, I mean, has continued to have an excellent season and, uh, Blake Bodley, when he came on, I thought had a good performance, uh, and actually did get the assist on Collier's goal. Uh, but I think he did a lot of other good things as well. Um, so it was good to see him back and firing. Yeah. And one more for me, I, I think Guido, I wouldn't say Guido's back to his old self. Um, but definitely I think he's kind of taken a step in the, in the right direction. I mean, he had the... He had a shot that forced a save into Conway's goal. A few more chances. I think he was kind of taking a few more kind of shots here and there, which I kind of feel like he's kind of been playing it safe so far this season. And like I said, I, we've said beforehand too, I still think he's coming back from injury a little bit. Um, so hopefully we kind of slowly get back to see how he was kind of last season. Um, but then also I've got here kind of a, still a lot of work to to do if we kind of are to kind of go far in the playoffs and hopefully win a championship like I think most of us. I wouldn't say expect to win the league or the, the USL this year, but I think after the last few seasons, we kind of at least want to go far in it. Um, but I think we still have a, a lot of work to do to get to that point. 
Um, but moving on to the Oakland game this weekend, uh, we all know Oakland and how they play. I mean, we 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 all know too well how good they are, especially after last season um, being bounced. I think was it three 0 or four 0 in the playoffs? Um, three 0 I think, yeah. But with three red cards as well. Three 0 three red cards. Um, it was my birthday as well, so possibly one of the definitely one of the worst birthdays I've had in a very very long time. Um, we were very hard to top that. Um, but again, so far this season, Oakland currently sitting in seventh in the Western Conference. They've had four wins, two lo- two draws, and four losses. Currently sitting on uh, a goal difference of three with 15 goals scored, 12 against. They lost sac- lost to Sacramento 3-1 in their last game. Um, and then also at home, they've won two, drawn one, and lost one. So not a bad record at home. Um and as far as kind of players have lost in the off season, they lost Charlie Dennis, who uh, scored an absolute screamer against us in that playoff game. But he's gone to Tampa Bay, and I know he's. Um, I didn't. He didn't look great against us for Tampa, but I think Tampa didn't look good in general. But I know Charlie's gone to score um, a fair few goals recently, so showing his kind of uh, talent there. Carlson um, was also a loanee from Venezia um, in Italy, and then uh, is it Azoka or Azoka, uh, a wing back for them. Um, who I know, Dylan, you mentioned before as well. So I think scored, what, 10 goals and one assist last season. Sam. So a, uh, a very big miss for them. Um, but Dylan, do you think Oakland deserve to be seventh in the Western Commons right now? Kind of, do you think that's a fair spot for them currently? Kind of, How would you kind of rank how they've done this season so far? I think, uh, honestly, it might, be a bit of, uh, it might be a bit harsh on them. I think um, there's a couple of games that they... So two, they've lost four games this season, but two of those were to Sacramento and to San Antonio, both on the road, I think. Um, so those aren't games you would expect to win, really. Um, and then another one of their four losses was on the road to Loudoun, which, as we well know, traveling east is hard for West Coast clubs. Um, so I think that like lower on the table, four losses is absolutely a little bit deceptive. Um, especially when you look at some of the XG data that um, has been posted recently on Twitter. Um, Oakland are one of the best teams in the league as far as chance creation. Um, So I think uh, uh, I would expect them to definitely be pushing um, absolutely for a playoff spot, maybe even for a home game um, come the end of the season. I think they're a team uh, that once they start figuring it all out will be even more tough to beat. Yeah, I mean, looking at the table here, you kind of look at all the teams above them. I said the Western Conference this year is absolutely stacked. I mean, I know obviously now the Eastern Conference isn't too bad. Um, but if you look at the Western Conference, I mean, I mean they're in seventh right now, but below you've got New Mexico United, Monterey Bay, RGV, who um, we all know are on too bad this season. Um, and there, but I said the, the Western Conference is a is a crazy crazy stacked side, and. Um, Whoever makes it into the playoffs, it's going to be it's going to be tough, especially around like those seven, eight, and nine places. Um, but again, like I said they they didn't do that great last season to finish off. Did they? I think they finished what seventh for last year as well, um, which allowed for the matchup versus us in the playoffs. We what finished second last year. Um, so again, they've lost some key players. I wouldn't say they brought in anyone that's kind of um, as the same level of those players, um, but they're always pretty much a, a solid unit, a solid team. Um, and also they have lost Juan Guerra to uh, Phoenix, although he was more so um, a late season loss, but I still think they kind of have the call um, from him and kind of the, the play style there too. And Dylan, can you walk us through how they lined up in their last game versus Sacramento as well, please? Sure, yeah. So starting at the back, um, Paul Blanchett, I, I would argue, is probably one of the best shot stoppers in the USL. Um, you know, he has his flaws and you can make your gripes about his overall play but as a shot stopper i think he's probably one of the top two or three in the usl um and then the back line uh from left to right we've got barbier hackshaw who's been in the usl for shoot almost eight years now um, a usl vet and then Tarek morad who had a few games for Boyle in 2020 and 2021 although i don't know how much of an impact he ever made on the squad um, and then in the midfield, we've got Tamakis on the right, um, a young guy, Gomez, uh, in a center mid, who has only made, I think, four or three, four starts um, in the USL Championship um, and made his pro debut this season, came up from Oakland's uh, USL League Two team, Project 510, which has produced uh, a couple of talents for them and I think is a really promising youth development setup they've got there. Um, so Gomez and then Mat- 
Matsoso, I'm sorry if I'm butchering that, in the midfield as well, um, and then right on the left. Uh, and then up front, you've got a pretty potent three of Rito, Formella, and Mfeka, who um, all in their own right are decent goal scorers. Yeah, it's a it's a good team. I mean, there, were, there isn't anyone, I think, who is, I wouldn't say, the standout USL talent or player um, amongst that team. I think Blanchett, honestly, the, the guy against us in the playoffs, um, still on his head, he was had an unreal game that game. Um, the guy is very a very slender goalkeeper, which um, is, I think, a very weird word to describe a goalkeeper, but when you see him, he's a very kind of, lean slender goalkeeper but he saves absolutely everything very a great shot stopper um but again obviously Morabi used to play for us um I think he only had about six appearances not too much there but kind of the other standouts really have gotten the team um Brian Tamakis uh, is El Salvador international their right wing back um actually made 62 international appearances Kevin Wright their other wing back the left wing back who's a Sierra Leone international um originally born in England but also came through the Chelsea Academy and then Neville Hatshaw, um, the centre back who has been in, been in the USL for a while now, he used to play for Indy 11. I believe you've made around 88 appearances for Indy 11, so um, a lot for them. And obviously, Indy have always been kind of a an Eastern Conference powerhouse there. Um, and uh, I don't know if I touched on that already, but yeah, Trinidad and Tobago, international too. So a lot of uh, a lot of international players there. A lot of um, different nationalities, a very kind of mixed squad. Um, and they're playing a three four three. Um, but Dylan, any kind of other information we've got here as far as how they're going to play um, in the actual game coming up this weekend? Uh, yeah, so they um, they play a three four three three four two one kind of setup um, that you'll see a lot these days. I think that's kind of um, you know like a formation du jour these days. But uh, they play; uh, they really like to dominate the wide spaces. Um, their central midfielders will move wide sometimes, especially Gomez um, created a lot of chances for them against Birmingham, a road game that they won four to one impressively. Um, so expect to see them try and do overlaps and wide overloads. Um, and I did also want to add real quick um, that uh, Navil Hackshaw, though, I don't think he played. Oh no, actually I was wrong. I was going to say he was on that squad in 2017 that beat the U S uh, but never mind. I was mistaken thinking of somebody else. Um, but uh, anyway, um, yeah, so they uh, definitely will press high um, and look to dominate the wide spaces. Yeah, I also got, I mean, they, they're going to push up higher. So they, they do play, I mean, a 3 4 3, but at times can almost look like a uh, a 3 2 5 with those two fullbacks kind of pushing on very high up the field. Um, and the center backs to kind of create a very high line and play, they're kind of very aggressive up the field. So again, I guess kind of a, an area for us to kind of look to kind of counter upon. Uh, I think our counter attacks this year haven't been great as far as especially the way we build up and play very slowly and kind of um, very safe. Don't look to play kind of many throughs over the top. So um, maybe it could be a game for Damas to to get in behind and uh, and exploit the back line. And then moving to how we will line up. I will say we are getting very very close. We're still yet to get a correct start eleven. Um, and I honestly wonder what the odds will be on us ever getting a correct Sutton 11 um, this season. But Dylan, we'll go into keeper and back three because I think it's going to be the easiest, I think. Um, but keeper back three, who would you go with here? Yeah, so we're definitely getting closer, um, but being exactly one player in position away uh, against Miami, I think might be the closest we're going to get. And now that the squad's starting to get healthy, I think it's going to get more difficult. But anyway, um, for the back line, uh, Koge and Net, um, he's been great so far this season. Um, I don't think there's hardly been any of the goals we've conceded have really been his fault. Um, so that's been great. Uh, Kyle Adams has to be in in there um, just because we're missing people in the back line and he's obviously one of our better defenders. Um, Stoneman I'm a little unsure about. He came off at halftime against Miami. Um, it's hard to say whether he was injured or just not playing well or if it was more of a tactical thing. Um, but I think, hope he'll be back. So I'm going to go with Stoneman um, and then Elijah as well in the back line uh, because I just think, you know, for now, unless we bring somebody else in, I think he's our... He's the best person for that spot. Yeah, I, I think I would agree with you. There. I think the the only kind of 
I guess if he won there, really, he's going to be stoning as far as um, if it was kind of more of a tactical decision or an injury. I think more so injury. I know he did get kind of a, a pretty hard kick to the ankle um, on the weekend, but we'll see if he's back for that game. Um, but yeah, back three. I mean, we've kind of thrown Simba in and around there. Camden Riley, too. I know Camden came on for... Um, Stoneman on the weekend, so maybe if Stoneman's out, then Riley comes in. Um, I'm, like I said, we always, I think we said this every week as far as we think Simba should be playing more, but I, again, it's it's one of them. And obviously, Nate's got his favourites; he knows who's kind of suited to there. Um, although I'm, I'm I, I guess at times I'm a little worried too that I think Simba maybe get frustrated too that he's not getting enough game time, and I do think he could start a, a decent amount of USL clubs um, in the league too. And then moving into the midfield, um, we'll go wing backs to begin with. Obviously, start with Perez and Nick Moon in the last game. Do you think we stick with those two, or do you think Bowley comes back in after um, a fairly decent substitute appearance on the weekend? Yeah, I, I do think Bodley comes back in. Um, that assist was obviously key, but like I said earlier, he had some great moments outside of that. Um, and especially on the road against a team that creates chances with the frequency and potency that Oakland does, um, and also a team that we never play that well against. Um, Bodily is a little bit more defensively sound than Perez, so I think uh, Moon and Bodily would be my choice. Are you are you really? Did Bodily mean that assist? You think? Um, I don't think he necessarily was trying to f- pick out Elliot Collier, but I do think he meant to cut it back to that space between. Uh, like the top of the six in the penalty box. Yeah, I do. Okay. I It looked like a bit of a shot to me that just went astray, but um, we'll, we'll give him the assist for that. But yeah, I think you're spot on there too as far as kind of a, a more defensive-minded um, fallback in Miami. We probably wanted to get a bit more attacking, um, get them on the back foot. So Perez was kind of uh, favoured there. But I think having Bodley in there will um, will suit us well. And like I said there, we never do well against Oakland. So it's, uh, it's always going to be a tough one playing away there. And in the midfield, do you think we go with a two or a three here? Um, I think this is really the tough one as far as do we go to a midfield two and a front three or a midfield three and a front two. I, As always, it'll probably be somewhere in between. Um, but I think uh, as Charlie is still out as far as we know. So um, I expect that Corona and Martin will be in there. And then um, Guido, like you said earlier, probably had his best game of the season. So um, yeah, yeah. Midfield three with Guido getting forward, kind of a, a flex three two kind of midfield. Yeah, it's more of a two point five, two point five either way. Guido in that little kind of hole, and then I think we we're getting to a point now. I think for a part for a portion, we were kind of getting pretty comfortable as far as the attack goes. The front two was fairly kind of it worked itself out. Um, I think speaking to you beforehand, I wouldn't mind of giving Collie a, a start, especially after his last game. Although, kind of thinking about how Oakland are going to play, I think also think Darmus would do well against them as well with the high back line. Um, I wanted to get some space in behind. Uh, I guess, I think Conway for me definitely is going to be the starter and I think he's a foregone conclusion there. And I think the other one is, is a tough one, really. Um, but I've not mentioned Toomey either. I think Toomey had a great game off the bench as well. But I don't believe if we, if we play the front two, Toomey's going to be one of them. But who would you go with out of Darmus and Conway for this one here? Um, well, like you said, Conway, I think, is a nailed on starter at this point. He showed his class uh, in that game, not only in terms of scoring goals, but just the general, you know, like creativity that he adds to our offense. Um, but for the other slot, I, I would love to say it. I think Collier will start. Um, he had a great game, not just the goal he scored, but he also played Conway through for what ultimately became the own goal for our second. Um, he had a really nice turn there. That said, I think kind of as you alluded to, just the fact that we're on the road against a team that can press and score goals, um, I think Thomas's threat on the counter might be necessary here. So I personally am going to go Thomas, but I don't know. What do you think? How would you make that decision? <laughs> to be full, like I said before this, I was I would have gone Collier. I think speaking about it more, thinking about it more with how they play. I'm going to agree and go Damas. I think if this was, this was any other team other than Oakland, I would have gone with Collier, especially with how Damas' form has been recently. I do think probably moving into the next game versus San Antonio, uh, obviously no Collier's Collier's old team. I do think we see Collier start that game. I don't want to get too far ahead as far as predicting lineup goes here, but I do think Damas gets a start purely with the way how they play, high back line, getting, getting in behind. Um, 
maybe the build-up won't be as uh, important as far as kind of hold-up play this game. So, uh, yeah, I'm happy to go with Adamus and Conway front two. And then moving into the key matchups, um, kind of the questions I've got here. Can Guido play more like his old self? I think we kind of saw more of him in the last game and I still think he's kind of lacking a bit. As I think I, I expect more from Guido and I think um, he should expect more from himself too. He, everyone knows how good he is. Uh, so I don't think he's kind of reached his heights that he can do. Can Damas get back on the score sheet? Um, it's been a long time since we saw it score since we saw Dharma score. And uh, I've not seen the, the Sioux celebration in a, in a very long time. So I wouldn't mind seeing that um, sometime soon, you know. And then uh, will Oakland take advantage of our inconsistent back line? I think um, every game I see us defending, I get a little bit more worried, which um, it isn't great, you know. I mean, there's always a, a defensive error here or there and kind of a few things that we can work on. And then uh, will we attack down the wings or try to kind of come inside a bit more? Because um, again, it's very kind of more often than what we kind of tap down the wing, and we did see a a, um, a few chances down the middle against Miami, but we'll have to see versus um, Oakland this week. And but Dylan, any kind of other matchups, any kind of additions to what I've gone through there for the uh, for the upcoming game? Yeah, n I, no real additions. Just uh, to elaborate, um, you know, kind of we alluded to earlier, Oakland really liked to dominate that wide space and create wide overloads and overlaps um and loyal also like to do that so it will be interesting to see who can kind of dominate those wide spaces um but also i, I just as far as our inconsistent back line I, I wanted to point out that in our last two games we've conceded five goals to two of the worst teams offensively speaking in terms of like xg per shot and just overall xg per game um so that's not great i know there's been some errors uh, some unlucky own goals, but um, we really, uh, I don't know, man, we got to figure something out there on the back line because it's its making me nervous. It's been, uh, I mean, you go back, I mean, when, the last time we had a clean sheet looking here was against Tampa Bay Rowdies on April 23rd. So a month from today, um, and I know to begin the season, we were seeing uh, our praise as far as kind of clean sheet after clean sheet, kind of is this a new defense under Nate? Um and uh, after that, it's kind of been a bit more same old. And then uh, I guess it's almost looked worse at times than last season too, which um, it isn't kind of promising to see. But again, like I said, we always say the season's long, plenty of time to work on things, but I I still think we need one or two more players. And I, I'm going to say this every single episode, honestly, until we sign another player, but I, I don't think we are the complete team as of yet. And then moving into my favorite part, predictions. Dylan, you've, got, you've had plenty of time to think. What are you going with this week? And uh, well, so last week I went um, not so positive and predicted a draw, um, and we won. So I'm actually going to stick with that, uh, partially <laughs> because I'm a little bit superstitious, or rather, a little stitious, um, and also because Oakland is like absolutely our bogey team. Um, I really don't think there's any getting around that at this point. So I'm gonna I, I'm gonna go two to two. Um, a scoreline I think we've seen it twice before in Oakland. Um, I don't know. I just, I, I would love to be wrong again. Let's just say that. But um, for us, I will go Conway and Guido. And for Oakland, I will go Mfeka and Rito. That's a, that's a fairly decent prediction there. I think, yeah, last week was obviously you guessed 2-2. Two, two. We finished up 3-2, I guess 2-1. Um, so, I mean, neither of us are getting, I mean, you were one goal off, I'm give you that, but... Wrong result. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go three two here. A three two again. I, I do think we get the win this time. I don't think Oakland are as good as they have been previously. Um, but like I said, there they're always always a good team. We never play well on turf, honestly. Um, we never play well away, especially at Oakland. Um, although they aren't in the same stadium now, which I think will maybe see us a little bit better. It isn't kind of a, as in kind of close and compact. Um, as our last one. Um, goals for us, I'm probably going to go with, we'll go two for Conway. At, mm, we'll, we'll go Conway, Damas, and then last goal, we'll go with a Guido goal. So, and then uh, for them, I'm going to go, it's a tough one here, honestly. I'm going to go probably, um, we'll go with Murad, score from a corner, and then we'll go uh, for Mella. To, to get a scrappy goal in there on the box or uh, from a defensive error, but I don't want to jinx us saying that there as well. Um, before we wrap things up there, Dylan, anything else to add? I know you are making the uh, long old trip up to Oakland, so I'm, uh, I'm assuming you're looking forward to that. 
Yeah, absolutely. I, um, for those who don't know, I was born in Oakland and lived there until my uh, early teenage years. So it's always nice to go home. I haven't been there since before the pandemic. Um, so that'll be good. And uh, I've been wanting to make this road trip up to Oakland for years now, but the games have always been on Wednesdays for whatever reason. So it's nice to finally have a Saturday. Um, yeah, I'm super looking forward to it. I know there's a decent contingent of local folks making the trip up. Um, and then I'm going to go to an A's game the next day and bring my uh john fisher protest banners so very excited about that there'll, uh, there'll probably be more people at the uh, the um oakland roots game than the oakland a's game i'd imagine actually yes probably this weekend <laughs> um but i'll wrap, wrap things up there obviously we'll be back next week for another bums breakdown going over the san antonio game and again the uh these games are coming thick and fast now obviously oakland this weekend san antonio next weekend back at home against sacramento and then san antonio once more so Games aren't getting any easier. We'll be back again next week. And uh, thanks for watching or listening. We'll see you guys very soon.